we're definitely talking about well, a moon land well, mission to start. We've had a bit of a setback this morning for the team behind NASA's moon mission with the planned launch of the most powerful rocket ever built, Artemis One, scrubbed because of an engine problem. The issue couldn't be fixed in time. The launch was postponed. And somebody who was there as the countdown was cancelled at Cape Canaveral was, is the head of the Australian Space Engines Agency, Enrico Palermo. And he joined me a little earlier from Florida. Unfortunate, but this is flight test of, of a brand new rocket. Uh, NASA proceeded through a lot of the countdown. They were filling the tanks with, with hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, but they couldn't get one of the engines. There's four engines in the main part of the rocket that lifted off the ground. Uh, and one of those engines, they couldn't cool to the right temperatures before it gets exposed to the vibration uh, and the extreme temperatures when those motors are firing. And so NASA uh, terminated the countdown at around uh, T minus 40, 40 minutes uh, to launch. It was a day plagued with issues, wasn't it? Like there, there were some weather concerns, some problems with putting hydrogen in the tanks. Is this all just ops normal for this sort of stage of the, of the mission of the testing? Absolutely. Weather's going to do what weather's going to do. You can't control that. And when you're testing uh, what is the world's uh, most advanced rocket, the most powerful rocket's ever flown, and one that's going to fly a spacecraft designed for humans deeper into space than any other spaceship uh, to date, uh, there's a lot to test, uh, new systems to cycle through. And there'll be so many learnings for NASA and the control team today. They got to iron out their processes. They learnt things around uh, filling the tanks. And so when they go back to the pad, to try again, uh, they're going to be in such a better position. When will they try again? So notionally, the next window opens around midday here on uh, the 2nd of September, just in a few days time. Uh, to make that date, they've got to make sure they understood uh, what the issues were today and that they won't repeat themselves. And so the next uh, target is the 2nd and then potentially after that is the 5th of September. So there's still some options. Those windows get progressively shorter and shorter, though, don't they? So if there are any issues, like I think there were some 40-odd pauses because of micro debris that's in orbit around the Earth. Uh, is, is this really going to launch this week? Oh, it's, it's hard to tell. I think NASA aren't giving up on that opportunity. I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, if, if the rocket has to leave uh, the launch pad, I think that will be a telling signal they're probably going to go longer than Friday. But I think uh, we won't know for probably another 24 hours or so uh, what the likelihood of that launch on Friday is. The mission manager said there is a non-zero chance, which I think uh, is glass half full. So it's, it's sounding very good. Hey, what, what is Artemis ultimately going to do? Uh, Artemis, this is number one, right? We've still got two and three to go. Exactly. So this is Artemis One. It's one of three increasingly sophisticated missions that will see uh, humans return to the surface of the moon. So this mission, uh, much like Apollo 8 without crew, was going to circumnavigate the moon, uh, test the rocket really beyond its extremes and the, and the capsule that will return humans uh, back to a splashdown on Earth. Uh, Artemis Two, which will be in approximately two years' time, will carry uh, the first uh, human crew aboard the Orion uh, spaceship. And then middle of the decade, 25, 26, depending on how the test program goes, the aim is to do uh, another moon landing and, and return. And this moon landing is really the start of developing a permanent presence on the moon, uh, not just uh, to visit and plant the flag.